Hey guys, welcome to another Essential Tutorial. So today I'm going to be showing you how we can use Houdini and some nodes in order to create some abstract uh, box landscapes. So the first thing I'm going to create is a grid, and I'm going to set my rows and columns to 150 by 150. Now I'm going to be loading in an image as a texture here using the attribute from map node. And I have this image I took in Hawaii, and it's already black and white. And I'm just going to be making sure that we're writing to the CD color channel. So from here, I'm going to be promoting these attributes. And all that means is that currently in our geometry spreadsheet, you can see that all of the color data is written to our points. But we actually want to go ahead and transfer that data to our primitives as well. So you can now see in the geometry spreadsheet, we also have that color data on our primitives. Okay, so moving on here, I'm also going to be doing a poly extrude. Now, before we can use the poly extrude, um, we're going to need to use an attribute wrangle in order to convert some of that color data into a single float channel that we can read. So that single channel, I'm going to call Z extrusion, and I'm just going to grab our green channel of our color. It doesn't really matter. You can use the red or the green, uh, sorry, or the blue channel. Um, their values, because it's black and white, should be all the same roughly. Uh, but in this case, I'm just going to use the green. So let's go ahead and pump that into our poly extrude. And I just want to go under local control. And I want to set the distance scale to that new Z extrusion channel that we just created. So when I go back to our scene view here, and let's go back to the extrusion, if I start to play with the distance, and I set it to this new Z extrusion channel, you should see that the values of that poly extrude is now being displayed uh, by that channel. And you can just kind of play around with the values here in order to exaggerate the scale. So I'm going to add a bit more resolution as well. I'm just going to change it to be 500 by 500 um, for the columns and the rows. So one other thing I want to play around with is that once we have the poly extrude working, I actually want to add another color node in order to ramp those color attributes over the rest of the boxes. So just using a preset here, uh, let's just choose one that uh, I like. Just for demonstrations, let's use a simple gradient from white to red. Now, first things first, we also need to set the redshift uh, ROP so that we can start rendering with redshift. I'm using uh, one of the latest versions of redshift for this one, so your version might look slightly different. Um, but we're just going to need to set up a camera, and I just want to enable depth of fields, and that should be it for now. Let's also create a redshift material so that we can get that color channel data and apply it onto a material. So using a user data color uh, node, we can actually drive in that color data from our points and we can have that affect the diffuse color channel of our standard material. So under the box mountains geo, if we go to the material slot and I select that redshift material I just created, it should now be applied. I'm going to just need a single RS light dome and I'm going to use another RS light as well to drive a, a directional light in our scene. So let's reset the position and I'm just going to rotate it so it's roughly 45 degrees to the camera and I'm just going to zoom it right back here so that we can get some of these nice shadows kind of drawing across our scene. I also want to play around with the size of our light so if I come down to the shape parameters I can actually mess around with the x and y height. Lastly I also want to mess around with the spread here just so that we can control the amount of spread that the light is going to have over that distance. I want something pretty narrow is that I think it's going to create a lot more of a dramatic effect.
just one other tip here, you can actually look through your lights and that just helps you kind of make sure that you're pointing it uh, correctly in your scene. So for the spread, I'm just gonna use something like maybe 0.23 and I just adjusted the intensity to something like 20. Um, so you can actually use this new feature in Redshift where you can actually pick your fo focus distance and it'll um, change your circle of confusion, your power, uh, your focus distance. It's actually really handy for being able to quickly iterate and get a nice looking shot. So you can see the colored data isn't actually being brought in correctly, so I'm just gonna fix that in a moment. And I think that's because we need to apply it to our primitive class, which is where we uh, promoted that color channel. And there might be something else we have to change here. Okay, so it looks like we have to change it to point class in order to get that color data to actually display correctly. So under my redshift material, I also want to kind of add some other uh, features to our shader just so that it looks a little bit more interesting. I'm going to play around with the reflection here, just adding a bit of weight. Um, I'm going to change maybe our subsurface scattering just to play around with the weight and the scale. And we can change the color values here in order to kind of add some, some interest as that color will be bleeding throughout the shadows um, using that subsurface feature. Still looks a little bit too dark, so I'm going to also change some of these other features as well. Afterwards, I'm going to go and, and tweak my lighting. Um, let's mess around with adding a few custom LUTs as well. One of the cool things about Redshift is it comes with all these preset LUTs, so you can actually see how your color could be uh, changed uh, and tweaked before you uh, throw it into post. We can add things like bloom, you can add flare, streak, uh, bokeh. I'm just going to add really subtle bloom as I think that just adds some nice highlights. Cool. Okay, so moving on, let's go back to our object view here. And I just want to make sure our dome light is on. And let's just do another quick test render. I just want that dome light to kind of fill in some of our shadows. I don't want it to be too intense. And I think just playing around with the spread and a bit of the intensity, we should be able to get it to a spot that looks good. One of the other things that uh, is cool about Redshift is volume contribution. You can actually choose how much volumetric uh, contribution is being contributed per light source. So you can mess around with lowering or increasing that in order to uh, get a good balance that you like. One of the other cool things I like is the color control. So you can play around with the exposure, contrast, and you can actually set it per RGB channel. So that looks pretty good so far. Let's also adjust our depth of field. If you decrease um, the circle of confusion, that should also increase the depth of field in our scene. And I also want to bring out some of these greens and lower our reds. Or sorry, lower the greens and then in increase the reds. Um, okay, jumping back, uh, you can also change out the images, which is pretty cool. So once these systems are built in Houdini, it's really quick to be able to adjust your images that are driving these setups. 
and you can get a ton of different variety and uh, options. So even just playing around with the rows, for instance, we can get some really cool abstract looks um, because it's only being driven with very few um, rows, but that still propagates down all of our different nodes and still works great. Anyway, so that should be pretty much it. I just went and uh, changed some cameras and added in a few different lighting parameters. But for the most part, I just had fun playing around with messing with uh, the bitmaps and changing those out. And then you can also change out the color ramps to be all kinds of different uh, cool color combinations. So I hope that uh, helped you guys out today and I will see you next time.